In this problem, we're told a small mailbag is released from a helicopter that is descending steadily at 1.5 meters per second. After two seconds, A, what is the speed of the mailbag? And B, how far is it below the helicopter? C, what are your answers to part A and B if the helicopter is rising steadily at 1.5 meters per second? So let's just go ahead and solve it for A and B first, right? Because C is going to actually change what's going on. But for A and B, right, we have this helicopter. I'm just going to draw a box because I can't do that. But we have this helicopter. We know it's going to be traveling or descending, right? It's going to be traveling this way at 1.5, right? Its initial velocity is going to be 1.5 meters per second. And I'm going to label it negative, and the reason that is is because it's going down, right? Because we say up is positive, down is negative. So it's going to be minus 1.5 meters per second. So just keep that in mind. There's a negative there. Um, and so, yeah. And then after two seconds, right? So there's a mailbag in it, right? It's going to drop, right? So it's going to fall down. And then after two seconds, we're trying to find some things, right? So the time is going to be two seconds. Okay, and we're trying to find the speed here, right? So imagine it falls this distance. We don't know what it is, but it's going to have some velocity there, right? V, and it's also going to travel some distance, right? And I'm going to call it delta y, the distance. So we're trying to solve for these two variables. So let's write down our given. So what are we given? So let's, for these problems, we're kinematics, right? So we want to write out all the variables in these equations, and we're going to determine whether or not we have them. So we have delta y, right? We have V, V sub 0, we have A, and we have T. So these are all the variables. Let's determine whether or not we have them. So delta y, it's going to be the change in the y, right, of our mailbag, right? And we don't know what that is. That's what we're trying to solve for in B. So, or not necessarily that's what we're trying to find, but it's related to that. So, and then V, right, it's velocity at the end is also what we're trying to solve for. We're trying to find that in A, okay? V sub zero, it's initial velocity. So for these problems, when something is dropped out of something, the thing that the thing that is dropped out of in that speed is going to be what the thing travels at. So its initial velocity is minus 1.5. Right, so the, the, the speed of the mailbag, the thing that's falling out, is the same as the speed of the helicopter, which is traveling 1.5 meters a second downward. Acceleration is just going to be acceleration due to gravity, which is minus 9.8. Well, it's 9.8 meters per second, but it's negative because it's going down. The time, how long is this taking? Two seconds, right? Okay, so let's just go ahead and start with A, because B is going to be a little bit tricky. So for A, we're trying to find the speed of the mailbag, right? So we're solving for V. Right, of this interval, right? Notice how we have v sub 0, we have a, and we have t, meaning uh, we can just use one of these equations to solve since we already have three variables. So the one that sticks out to me, right, is this one right here, right? Because all these contain delta x, but in reality, delta y, because we're in the y direction. But uh, yeah, this is the one we're going to use because uh, it has all the variables we, can, we have, right? We have v, uh, v sub 0, and a, or we have v sub 0, we have a, and we have t, so we can solve for v. So v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. Uh, we don't know what v is, but it's going to be equal to v sub 0, which is minus 1.5, uh, plus minus 9.8, so it's just minus 9.8 times 2. Right, so we just plugged in the variables. Uh, right, so minus 1.5, minus 9.8 times 2. You're going to get v equals uh, minus 21.1 meters per second. Okay, so minus 21.1 meters per second, that's going to be the speed. Uh, of our mailbag after two point uh, two point or two seconds, right? So this is its speed right here, right? So it's negative because it's going downwards, right? So we're including direction into this, but it's really traveling at just twenty one point one meters per second downwards. So minus twenty one point one meters per second. Okay, cool. So now let's do B. So B is going to be a little bit tricky, and I'll show you why. So B, we're trying to find how far is it below the helicopter. So the way I want you to think about this, right? Delta Y is going to be the change in the height of the mailbag, right? So the problem, right, so think about this, two different things are um, going down, right? So you have the helicopter, because what we're solving for is the distance relative to the helicopter. So the bag is going to fall some distance, right? And we can solve for that delta y, but the helicopter is also going to travel down. So the distance between them isn't just going to be delta y, it's going to be delta y, and then there's some distance right here that we have to take into account, right? Because it's going to be delta y minus whatever this distance is that the helicopter travels down, because it's also moving. So what we want to do is go ahead and solve for delta y, but then we also want to find how far the helicopter travels down. Okay, so which equation do we want to use? So, uh, right, so we're solving for delta y, so delta y question mark, uh, and then I think we can just use uh, this one right here, right? We can use these variables. So I'm going to use this equation, right, because it has v, has uh, t, and it has a. So that's what we're going to use. So delta y equals v sub zero times t plus one half a t squared. So delta y equals v sub 0, which is minus 1.5, times t, which is 2, plus 1 half times a, which is minus 9.8, times t squared, which is 2 squared. 
So you're going to go ahead and do this and solve for delta y. Minus 1.5 times 2 plus 1 half times minus 9.8 times 2 squared. And when you do this, you're going to get minus 22.6, and it's going to be meters. So the distance, right, it's going to travel 22.6 meters down, right, the back. But it's we're trying to find relative to the helicopter. So the helicopter is also going to travel some distance. What's it going to travel? So the, the, the helicopter's speed isn't changing, right? So there's no acceleration on the helicopter because it's not in free fall, unlike the other object, right? So it's just going to be the initial velocity times how long, right? So times 2. So the, the helicopter is going to travel at, right, because we know... Uh, distance equals velocity times time. So it's just 1.5 times 2. So it's going to travel 3 meters, okay? So the thing is going to travel 3 meters, right? So if this one travels 22.6 meters, right? 22.6 meters, and this one travels 3, the distance between the two is just this one minus how far this is, which is 3. So 22.6 minus 3, right, is going to be 19.6. Okay, so 19.6 meters, that's going to be the distance between the bag and the helicopter. So 19.6 meters, that's going to go ahead and be your answer to B. So how far is it below the helicopter? Okay, so that's B. So we have B and A now. Now let's do part C. So uh, for part C, we're doing the same exact thing, except for uh, we're doing the same thing, right? We're trying to solve for V and uh, the change in Y, except for the helicopter is now rising at 1.5. So instead of it being negative, it's gonna, now going to be positive, right? So we can basically do the same thing, except for we have to alter a few things. So for C, we're solving for this, right? And we know v equals v sub 0 plus a times t. But in this problem, v sub 0 is now 1.5. Why? Because instead of it being negative, it's positive now. So v equals 1.5 multiplied by a, which is minus 9.8, times the time. So the time is still 2 seconds. So do this. So you're going to get 1.5 minus 9.8 times 2, which is going to be minus 18.1 meters per second. Right? So it's going to be a little bit slower, and that makes sense, right? Because it's starting with a positive velocity. So it's, it's traveling at 18.1 meters per second down. So I don't know how your teacher wants you to do it, but make sure you specify that. So you could say 18.1 meters per second down or just negative downwards. So this is going to be the V, right, when it's 1.5. Okay, cool. So now let's go ahead and do D. So D is going to be the same exact thing, except for now we're using 1.5 instead of negative, right? So delta Y is equal to uh, V sub 0, right? So this equation, so 1.5 times 2 plus 1 half times minus 9.8 times 2 squared. So go ahead and do this. Let's plug it in. So 1.5 times 2 plus 1 half times minus 9.8 multiply that by 2 squared. And so when you go ahead and do this, you're going to get minus 16.6. So minus 16.6, this is going to be, uh, right, so this is going to be how far it travels downwards. But what we want to do is, um, this is just how far it travels down. But the thing, keep in mind, this thing is also moving upwards. So we have to take that into account, right? Because it can't just be, because uh, just like the last one, right, it traveled down and this one traveled down. But instead of subtracting it like we did last time, we have to add because this thing's actually going upwards. Okay, so minus 16.6 meters, but how far is it going to travel upwards? Well, it's traveling at 1.5 meters a second for two seconds, right? Distance equals velocity times time. So the helicopter is going to travel 1.5 meters a second for two, so three meters upwards, right? So uh, it's going to be minus 16.6, right? And then, well, because it's traveled 16.6 meters, and then you plus the three, right? Because this one's going up three meters, this one's going down 16.6 meters. So the distance between the two is 19.6 meters. So 19.6 meters, that's going to be, um, right, how far they travel uh, between each other, right? So this right here is going to be your answer to, right? So I guess these aren't C and D, right? This is both C, but this is A, part C, and then this is the B of part C. So, yeah, these are going to be your answers, and, yeah, hopefully you found this useful.